All right, good morning. Y'all stand up and join us in worship. and the honor that you do deserve. Father, as we've come this way, now you see our reference. And Father, we just pray that you'd bless us with your presence. We thank you that you're always here, but now we pray for a special manifestation, the moving of your spirit among your people, Lord, that we would be able to give you the worship that you deserve. Father, we thank you for all the workers, the volunteers, the pastors, and all the staff of Harvest Christian Center today. Father, we pray today, bless our efforts, Lord, it's as minuscule as they may seem. Bless and anoint, strengthen us, Father, for the work of your kingdom today and will not fail to give you praise for all the good that's accomplished here today for it's in Jesus strong name we pray amen thank you you may be seated I want to take just a couple of moments and just uh, greet you this morning if you're a first-time guest here today let me just declare to you welcome home 
We are so glad you're here. Now, what I do need from you is just a small favor. Please, if you're a first-time guest, pick up one of our connection cards that are sitting in those chairs right in front of you and drop that in the offering plate, and, or you can just drop it off in the lobby today on your way out. If you want to, you can actually use it as a form of currency. Could you believe it? Uh, and what you'll be purchasing with that connection card is a beautiful gift. I say it's beautiful. Maybe you don't understand beauty the way I understand beauty. This is a caramel pecan chocolate chip bag of cookies. So praise God from whom all blessings flow. If you like cookies, you should be filling out a card right now. Amen? <laughs> Let me take just a moment and uh, make some other announcements. Of course, I hope you're aware, but we do have Christmas week services next Sunday, the 23rd, at our usual Sunday morning time. We'll be meeting here in the sanctuary at 930 for a great time of worship. And then on Christmas Eve, we also want to offer another opportunity for others to worship with us. Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. We'll also be gathering for a time of worship and a time of communion. And to that end, I've asked our regulars that if you would like to have some people with you, would you take time to fill out one of these All I Want for Christmas slips? And this on this slip, you're just going to list five people. You're going to drop it, and it's going to come back to my desk, and I'll be praying for these individuals every morning that you're going to be inviting to be with you in Christmas services. Amen? Sound like a great plan? All right. Well, let me take a moment and tell you how the Lord is blessing Harvest Christian Center, that we are going forward and we're growing in the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, at this time, I want to take a moment and recognize what we did last month. Early in the month of November, we had a water baptism Sunday, and we had a few folks to get wet. And I've got one certificate that I haven't passed out yet, and at this time, I want to remind you of the spiritual growth that is taking place in Mrs. Trish Tongas. Trish, if you'll come. Trish was baptized. She was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit on the 11th day of November, and this certifies it for all of eternity. Praise the Lord. As well as baptizing believers as the Lord gives us commandment we have been growing by church membership and this morning I want to recognize these new church members that are with us James and Sharon Hager Chris and Tanya Moy Vera Johnson thank you All right. praise God we're so grateful for the commitment of God's people to the work of the kingdom of God this morning, I'd just like to ask you to turn your attention to the screens for the remaining announcements. 316 prayer meeting today. This is our monthly prayer meeting where our focus is on praying for the lost. Please meet at the church at 316 p.m. 3D Kids Christmas Party, Sunday, December 23rd at 9.30 a.m. We invite all children to come and bring their friends as we will have a party celebrating Jesus. Our Christmas week schedule will be Sunday, December 23rd at 9.30 a.m., Monday, December 24th at 6 p.m., no services or classes on Wednesday, December 26th. We will be having communion at both the Sunday and Monday services. Biscuit Fellowship, Sunday, December 30th. Fortress Youth will have sausage biscuits and drinks for sale prior to the service beginning at 8.30 a.m. in the lobby. Cost will be $3 for a sausage biscuit and drink or $2 for the sausage biscuit. You will be able to pre-order your biscuits beginning today. Just fill out a form and drop it in the offering. There will be some available on a first-come, first-served basis. All proceeds will benefit the youth department. Food Bank this Thursday, December 20th at 10.10 a.m. to unload and sort food. New Year's Eve game night, Monday, December 31st from 7 to 10 p.m. Bring your favorite games, snacks, etc., and come join us for this fun time on New Year's Eve. Please sign up in the lobby if you plan to attend. These have been your harvest announcements. Check your bulletin for other announcements and opportunities for ministry. Praise the Lord. Does anybody here know about the love of Jesus? Does anybody know about the love of Jesus? Well, I tell you, he is loving on Harvest Christian Center here lately. I tell you, we are so grateful for what he has done. We want to extend a great big thank you for your generosity in the annual Thanksgiving offering. And we're going to keep this offering open until the end of the year. We're about $1,400 short of our goal. But we know that God is able. Somebody say, I agree and amen. 
If you would like to give in this special offering, just mark your offering as thanksgiving and place it in the regular offering, or you can give through our Harvest Text to Give option. So many ways that we can give to the Lord today. Also, beginning today through next Sunday, there is going to be a Christmas basket. It's a beautiful red bow back there as you enter into the auditorium. If you would like to bless our pastor and his family this year at Christmas, you can drop in a card or a love gift. Let's bless the man of God and his family this year. Amen. Acts 20, 35, as the ushers are coming. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. When I spend money, this is the way I sound. Oh, there goes another 20. Well, I've just lost another $50. I'm here to tell you this morning, that is not the way that God sees what we give to him. Everything that we give to him... He counts it as gain. Amen. Sowing into the kingdom of God is never a loss. It is always a gain. And keeping this in mind as you prepare to give. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you that we can always trust in you. You are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so, so much. We give you, Lord, this offering today, and with it, we worship you, and we give our whole selves to you. Receive it, Lord, and use it for your kingdom and your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Once I pass, you stand up and continue to join us in worship. Come on, put your hands together. Sons 
down on us You have made us new Savior displayed on a criminal's cross In darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost But then Jesus rose with our freedom in him And that's when death was arrested in my Cause me his own beauty. 
beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living And hallelujah, praise the one who sent me free, hallelujah, death has lost his grip on me. Salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living Lord. And hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. And hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. This salvation. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. And out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Sing that again. Then came the morning. That sealed the promise Your very body began to breathe And out of the silence The roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on me Jesus, yours is the victory And I 
today to honor the Lord and help us to worship him well you may be seated we want to turn our attention to the word of the Lord today and as we do that we are of course in that time of year that we always think about the giving and the receiving of gifts tis the season right and it's a beautiful love language that the giving and the receiving of, of gifts that and maybe that's your love language maybe that's the one that you speak most fluently you know you like to give you like to bless people how many of you like to receive you like to get gifts I don't think you're all being honest with me have I got to wait another week or so before you really get real about this how many of you really like to get gifts all right how many of you like to work and earn everything you get though you don't like gifts <laughs> Let me just tell you, what we have from God in Christ Jesus is a gift that you cannot earn. There's a phrase that's been around for a long time, the gift that keeps on giving. I want to use it as a sermon thought this morning, the gift that keeps on giving. In my history, I have had some um, mishaps with the giving of gifts. Have you ever just given the wrong gift? Or maybe you gave the right gift to the wrong person? I've tried hard before um, to do this right when it comes to giving my gift to my spouse and giving her the thing that I thought she would really like. There have been a few times when I've tried to give her a gift that I thought would just keep on giving. Obviously, I might have misunderstood things. There have been a few times in our history of marriage when I have given her something that I thought was very nice very small in size but pricey you know somewhat and of course I would have it wrapped up in a nice tight small package and I said tight and then I would take that package that I've wrapped up and I would place it in a box that's just larger than that box and place it and I'd wrap it up nice and tight and use lots of tape you know and then I would find a box that was somewhat larger than the last box I had just used and I would place it in that box and I'd make sure I wrapped it up how did I wrap it up nice and tight what beautiful paper now I wasn't skimping on the paper and then of course I would keep on going until I exhausted my supply of boxes and then when it's time for my precious wife to open up that gift she usually just loses patience with me because I'm making her work too hard for what's supposed to be a gift. It took me a few years of, you know, marriage before I finally figured this out. I was just being cute. I wasn't giving the gift that keeps on giving. But here's the deal. If you're giving someone a gift, they shouldn't have to work for it. Maybe I misspoke the language of giving and receiving of gifts. Maybe it wasn't her fault. Maybe it was all my fault. The gift that keeps on giving is an expression of speech that's been around since the earliest days of the 20th century in commercial advertising. Really, ever since the evolution of commercialism, you've heard this phrase used by different companies and different advertisements on billboards. The gift that keeps on giving. 
The real idea, though, of the gift that keeps on giving is older than time itself. For God originated this concept of the gift that keeps on giving. How did he do that? Well, heaven's gift to humanity is a babe in a manger. And by this Christ, we learn that he has good news for us, which we call the gospel. And through the hearing of this gospel, we, you and I, understand that we can accept the free gift of eternal life. Here's what I want you to understand this morning. This gospel is the only gift that keeps on giving because it opens up your life to the miracle-working, saving grace of God from the day that you receive it and for all of eternity. Truly, the gospel is the gift that keeps on giving. I'm very grateful to serve a local church here at Harvest that believes in the necessity of faith in Christ in order to go to heaven. We are, we could be described as a Bible-believing church because truly that is the teaching of the New Testament that you must place your faith in Christ in order to go to heaven. But the thought comes to me that maybe not every one of us in here actually understands this gospel, actually understands the necessity of faith in Christ in order to go to heaven. You see, there's only one way. You've got to place your faith in Christ. You've got to be like born again. But you know what? Everybody is not fluent. Can I help you, some of you who've been in Christ for a long time, maybe you've been a member of this church for decades, can I help you to understand something? Everybody does not understand the Christian language that you and I speak on a regular basis. Everybody doesn't understand phrases like commit your life to Christ, repent of your sins, you must be born again. Those are Christian phrases that you and I, we understand what we're talking about. We're like on the same level. We're speaking the same language. But you know what? Those phrases are not common in everyday language in this world. It's not like, oh no, it's raining again. <laughs> it's not like a phrase that you and I hear if we go out to the local restaurant. Would you like to make that a combo? You want fries with that, don't you? Uh, you see, the phrases that you and I use are sometimes not understood by those who are not in Christ or perhaps not raised in Christ. And what I want to do today is just take a few moments and explain so that everybody here can understand and know that you have received the gift that keeps on giving before your death. So you've got to do it before you die. The fact is, though, all of us are going to die. I have a spiritual gift for bluntness. Just in case you're offended, go ahead and brace up because I'm going to exercise my gift a lot over the next few minutes. Church, you're going to die. Every one of us here, uh, matter of fact, here's what I've learned. The mortality rate for humanity is 100%. All of us are going to die. The wise woman of Tekoa in 2 Samuel chapter 14, she put it like this. She says, for we will surely die and become like water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Every one of us in this room, we are going to die. But herein is my job. Some of you already thought I had a pretty easy job. Let me just make it real simple for you so that you understand just exactly how easy my job is. I want to help you to be ready to die. Yeah. And if the Lord should allow and you're ready to die and I get to speak at your funeral, I'll speak about what a good God we have that He helped you by His grace to be ready to die and go into eternity. The gospel, I believe, can be described as your basic good news, bad news scenario. You've heard those scenarios, haven't you? Where the gentleman or the lady would get up and say, I've got good news and I've got bad news. Which one do you want to hear first? I'm going to tell you the bad news first. I think this good news, bad news scenario can really be explained best by Romans 6.23. And it simply tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I'm sorry, that's Romans 3.23. Romans 6.23 reminds us that the wages of sin is... You, you've already heard this message? Did I already preach this? <laughs> the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Let's talk about the bad news for a few minutes first because I feel like really if you really want to understand the good news you've got to understand the bad news first because the good news isn't really that important to you until you really understand the impact of the bad news. What is the bad news? The bad news is the wages of sin is death. And this is not just talking about our physical death. I've already explained to you that every one of us are going to die. And some of you are like, well, that's not very deep, preacher. I already realized that. I've been to a few funerals in my lifetime. I've already come to grips with the fact that I'm going to die one day. But here, some of us don't ever think about it. 
Some of us act as though we're going to live forever. I mean, I think it's very encouraging when folks in their 90s get married for the fourth time. I mean, what, they think they're going to live forever? I mean, you know, if that's what makes the last few years happy, I'm fine with that. I'm not trying to disrespect that. I'm just saying some of us have forgotten the reality that we're going to die and we need to be prepared and ready to die. But when the Bible here tells us in Romans 6, 23 that the wages of sin is death, it's not talking about that first death. It's not talking about that physical death whereby this flesh and blood are going to be laid in a cold, dark grave. It's not talking about that. It's talking about an eternal separation away from Christ away from God and his Christ It's talking about an eternal separation it's called the second death it's about those who do not know the Savior who did not make their lives ready for eternity that we're all going to enter into when the Bible tells us the wages of sin is death it's saying this is what you've earned this is what you deserve anybody know what it's like to put in a full week's work and it used to be that nobody got paid by direct deposit. You'd have to get in line. You'd go see your foreman or your supervisor and somebody standing there handing out checks. And, and those folks who didn't really work hard that week, they kind of had to just drop their head and just, you know. <laughs> Listen, here's the reality. The wages of sin is death. And if you don't accept Christ, friends, you won't have to drop your head. You'll have to understand this is what you deserve. This is what you've earned. That wages are something that you get paid for what you've done. What have we done? We've sinned. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Did you notice what I just said? All. Me, you, my mama, your grandmama, Mother Teresa, Billy Graham, and Gandhi too. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. None of us has an excuse, friend. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What does it mean to sin? It means I've missed the mark. It means I thought I could do it my way. It it means that I didn't care that God is good and God is holy and God is just. I decided that I know better. I think it's time for us to laugh for just a minute. (laughs) That means even the preachers in the house are not without sin. We've all sinned. I heard a story about four preachers who went off for a little retreat, four friends who are preachers, and they're going for a little getaway. And as they've gone away for a little getaway, they go deep and far to get away. They get to one of those locations that's kind of isolated where you don't have any cell service, you don't have any Wi-Fi. There are still places like that that exist, by the way. And and, and they're way away. And after they've traveled, they get to their little retreat center. They're sitting there, and one of the four comes up with a bright idea. He tells the other three, he says, you know, gentlemen, Uh, All the time, week in, week out, you and I, we hear the people of God come to us. They confess their sins. They talk to us about what's going on in their life and the things that they're struggling with. And you know what? They, They don't have any shame about coming to us and talking so that we can help them. I think we ought to do the same here today amongst the company of us four and no more. Why don't we just share the things that we're struggling with? What's your secret sin? And, of course, it took a couple more minutes of him using good, strong language to convince all four of them to participate in this little exercise of just sharing their vices, sharing the sins that they struggled with. And finally, he started it off. He said, well, you know, the thing is, I really like to smoke cigars. The second one said, well, you know, here's my issue. I, uh, I don't know how to control my anger. I get angry a lot, and when I do, I lose my temper. I, I need y'all to pray for me. It's going pretty good. Third preacher in the group, he confesses, I think I've got an idol. I love to golf so much, guys, that there are times when I've lied about being sick on Sunday so that I could have a Sunday tea time and go play golf in the next town over. That's pretty rough, isn't it? All three have confessed, but there's still one preacher left. And he's just sitting there quiet as a church mouse, as they say. And he didn't want to confess his sin. He's just sitting there. And they're starting to put a little prayer pressure on him. They begin to talk to him and work him over. Hey, you heard the rest of us. We've confessed. Now, now you've got to join in this exercise, too. It's all four of us. Now, we three have done it. What is your issue? Finally, after he can't take the pressure anymore, he speaks up to them and he says... I love the gossip, and I can't wait till I get out of here. (laughs) All have sinned. He couldn't wait till he get a hold of some Wi-Fi service. At first glance, though, 
you and I have believed in a common thing because we tell each other, sin is sin, all sin is the same, Jesus died for all sin. But could we just be real here for just a minute and understand that there are sins of varying degrees. There are sins by which we have different earthly consequences. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, the sin of gossip is not going to get you the same earthly consequences as murderous crimes. Why is that? Uh, you know, if you just gossip all the time, what you going to do? You're going to end your life? You're going to be friendless. It's a sin. You'll offend everybody you know. You'll have a hard time maintaining any long-term friendships. But if you murder folks, there's going to be like some different consequences for that. I mean, we'll pray for you. You can repent of the sin. You can repent of all sin and get right with God. Uh, the sin of gluttony, you know, it's not near as bad as sexual crimes, is it? No, it's not. Why? Because there's different earthly consequences. But here's the thing. Earthly consequences and the judicial system of America is not the standard of heaven. What is the standard of heaven? The standard of heaven is God Himself. And our God is holy. And every time you sin, you're not just sinning and hurting others. You're sinning against the holiness of God. And God says, I will not excuse any man's sin. The wages of sin is death. Church, this is like a big problem. The wages of sin is death. But then we come to my favorite word in the Bible, perhaps my favorite, one of my favorites at least, and it's that little three-letter word. The wages of sin is death. But, <laughs> turn to your neighbor and say, you better thank God for that but. But. This three-little word, this conjunction, friend, is holding the key that you and I can understand something very, very important. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. What is the gift of God? It's eternal life. Physical death is not the end. We're all going to spend eternity somewhere. I mean, I'm not preaching anybody's funeral today, but I want you to be ready should I have to preach tomorrow. Or the next day. The reality is we're all going to enter into eternity. God created your soul to have an eternal existence. But if you ain't right with God, if you've not repented of your sins, if you've not come to grips with the reality that all have sin, and that includes you, well, guess what, friends? You're going to have to pay the wages for your sin yourself. But you see, here's the mistake that so many in America have made. We've made this decision. We've decided that God is just waiting for any good reason to send us to a devil's hell. Nothing could be farther from the truth. As a matter of fact, God loves us each and every one so much that He gave His only begotten Son. Isn't that the truth that we know of John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish, should not have to go to a devil's hell. We talk about going to hell, but here, understand there is a second death when death and hell are cast into the eternal lake of fire. That's bad news, but the gift of God is eternal life. Friend, that's good news. That's good news. We can open up our hearts. We can receive the gift of God. Please do not fall for the common popular theology of our day which says there's many different ways that you can go to heaven. Haven't you heard them? They tell us, well, you've got your way. I believe my way. Here, here, understand something. Christianity is exclusive. It's God's way or it's go to a devil's hell. It really is that real. I, I know that's not the kind of stuff like we like to hear. But it's like reality, isn't it? The reality is there is an eternal hell. But there's also an eternal heaven that you and I can go to. Glory to God. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth. And the lie, and no man, no woman, no child comes to me unless they come. No man goes to Father. Man, no man comes to heaven. Nobody's getting out of here and going to heaven forever and ever unless they go through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the only way we get out of here. Jesus didn't say there's a lot of ways, and I'm one of the ways, says, I'm the way. Don't you ever apologize for the exclusivity of Christianity. It's only for those 
who come through Jesus Christ. The bad news is, friend, we've sinned. We've sinned enough that we deserve more than one eternity in hell. And, and the thing is, though, it's almost as though there's nothing we can do about it. The only thing that could be done about it is God has to make a way for us to get right with Him. And that's exactly what He did through the gift of His Son. And the gift that keeps on giving, friend, is a gift of grace. What is this grace? This grace is unmerited favor. This grace is not just a, a, a faith, but it's also a force at work in all of humanity. This grace tells me that every man, woman, boy, and girl can hear the gospel, and there's been a measure of faith deposited in their lives whereby we are free moral agents, and we can place our faith in the gospel, in the good news of Jesus Christ, and we can receive the gift of God. Amen? Aren't you so glad of that? The Bible makes it very clear about what Jesus Christ did in that first chapter of the Gospel of John. It says, He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. They turned Him away. But then it declares, But as many as received Him, to those are the ones that He gives the power, the authority, the right to become children of God. Hallelujah. You see, when you were first born into this walk of life, you were not a child of God. Mm -mm. No, you are a creation of God. But when you're born again, that is when you get right with God, when you place your trust in the gospel, friend, you're born again, and then you become a child of God. So how do I get it? Well, it's through Jesus Christ our Lord. So I've established for us all this morning, every preacher and every deacon and every elder and every church officer and every staff member and every person that's sitting in a seat today, what is it? We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What do we deserve because of our sin? We deserve hell. The wages of sin is death. It's an eternal death and a devil's hell. But the gift of God. I love the gift of God. The gift of God is eternal life. That's the good news. But how do I get the good news? How do I receive this gift? Friend, you've just simply got to do what I said. You've got to receive it. The gift is not yours until you receive it. You ever try to give a gift to somebody that's full of pride? You know, it's, it's hard to give gifts to some people. Oh, no, no, no. I don't need that. All, knowing all along they really do need that. But they're full of pride. You're going to have to humble yourself if you really want to see, receive the gift of God. No, you don't deserve it. You do need it. And no, you're not good enough for it. The reality is God knows you're not good enough for it. That's why He gave Jesus. That's why He gave His only begotten Son. In spite of the fact that you're not good enough for the gift of God, which is eternal life, God says, I know you, I knew that already, and I still want to give you the gift. What have you got to do? You've got to open up your heart. You've got to open up your life. You've got to receive it. Little boy was at church one day, he's about 10 years old. He got saved. He went down to the altar and he, he prayed at the altar call and he received Christ and he's gloriously changed. You can see the encounter of his face just really changed and he's smiling, but he's crying. When he goes back to his seat, the tears are still running down his cheek and he sits up there on the front pew beside an older gentleman. But he notices as he sits down that the older gentleman sitting beside him seems like he's really upset and angry. And he looks up at him and he says, Sir, do you need to get saved too? And the gentleman looks at him and he's kind of caught off guard and it angers him that the little boy would even ask him such as that. And he says, son, I'll have you know I've been a deacon at this church for 30 years. And I'll even tell you more, I've been the chairman of the deacons for the last 15 years. Well, the little 10-year-old boy really don't understand, but he looks at him with a concern in his voice and he says, sir, it don't matter what you've done, Jesus will still save you. Ain't that the reality? It don't matter what we've done. It don't matter who you are. It don't matter how your parents raised you. It don't matter how much money you got or the lack thereof. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It don't matter how much education you got or if you ain't got none. God says, I still love you enough that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So today... I tell you in closing, I don't understand why people, when they hear the good news, continue to run. When they understand what a good offer we have in Christ Jesus. I really don't understand that. I would think that if you really understand and know where you are, that you have sinned and that you are a sinner, 
then it's like a no-brainer. Don't overthink it. Don't come up with all the excuses. You've placed too many excuses in front of the grace of God all your life. Don't do that anymore. Just understand, it's a free gift. You can't do anything to earn it. All you got to do is open up the, your hands and your heart and receive it. And it's that easy. You too can be saved by the glorious grace of God today. Everything you want might not be placed under a tree this year, but Jesus Christ hung on a tree so you could receive what you really need, the free gift of salvation. So would you stand with me all over the congregation? I asked you not to overthink the grace of God, and I don't want to overpreach the grace of God. Friend, this is a free gift. What better time to get right with God than during the month of December? It's Christmas time. Don't you want to receive the free gift of God? With eyes wide open, if you'll just look up here and listen for a moment, I want to ask you some questions that I don't want you to answer out loud. I just want you to answer them within the confines of your heart. Friend, I ask you, are you a sinner? Do you want forgiveness for your sins? Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you and that he rose again? Do you believe that? It's a fact of history. You should believe it. I ask you today, are you willing to surrender your life to Christ? Are you ready to pray? I'm going to make this easy for us all today. Treat this moment as it's holy. You don't know how the Holy Spirit is dealing with your neighbor, the one that's standing next to you. With heads bowed for a minute, for just a moment, with eyes closed, I'm about to lead us in a prayer. It's a prayer of salvation. And I know some of you have prayed the prayer of salvation before, but maybe everybody here hasn't. Maybe this is like the first time for somebody. Or maybe the person standing beside you is in their heart, far away from God. Maybe they're backslidden. Don't take it for granted. I think it's like be like good practice for every one of us here to pray this prayer of salvation. I'm going to pray it, and I'll ask that you would repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner, and I have sinned against you. I want forgiveness for all my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that he rose again for my new life. Father God, I open my hands and my heart and I receive the gift of eternal life. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. I commit to following you. Be Lord of my life and change me however you want. Thank you, God, for saving my soul, for giving me the gift of eternal life. Thank you for making me one of your beloved children. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Friend, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time in your life, can I encourage you to tell somebody standing next to you, let somebody know that you prayed the prayer of salvation, that you're really you're willing today to commit your life to following Jesus Christ. Maybe you'd like to fill out a connection card, let one of our staff know, because we want to be able to pray with you and show you the next steps in following Christ. Now, we're going to extend this invitation for just a few minutes longer. And I want to ask you, if you're a Christian here today, would you take this gospel very serious? Would you take it serious? I know you took it serious enough that you came to church today and you, you worshiped the Lord. But I wonder, have you got enough spiritual courage about you today that you say, you know what, I know people who need this gospel. I, I know people who have not received the gift of eternal life. Would you join me at these altars today? Can we come now? Could we pray for those who need to receive the gift? They're, they've allowed their pride. They've allowed their sinfulness of their life to keep them from receiving the free grace of God. 
Let's come. Let's pray for those individuals. Some of you have been filling out these slips all I want for Christmas. You're telling me about people that you really are not right with God. You want to see them get right with the Lord. You don't want to see them go to hell. You want to see them get right with God. Come on, let's pray for these individuals. Come on, church. Our prayer workers are also entering the altar space today, and they're here. So some of you need special prayer. There's needs going on in some of your lives, and you need help from God. Listen, humble yourself, and let somebody else agree with you in prayer. Let's worship the Lord as we pray.
For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I want to thank you today for cooperating with the grace of God. For those of you who filled these altars and maybe you were praying uh, there from your seat, thank you for praying according to the word and the will of God. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The promise of the scripture tells me, they that sow in tears shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. We praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't give up on anybody. Some of you know some people that you think of are really, really hard cases. Don't give up. There's hope. There really is hope. As long as they're on this side of eternity, there's hope for them to get right with God. Let's continue to believe in faith. Pastor Fred is coming to close us in prayer today. Thank you for your attention to the word of the Lord. you turn and smile to somebody before you leave out of here, all right, right now, before we pray. Amen. You hug their hand or shake their neck. No, I mean, I got that backwards. <laughs> shake their hand, hug a neck. <laughs> Let's thank God for His goodness. Oh, Lord, we thank You for what You're doing in our area. We thank You for what You're doing in this body of believers today. Thank you for everyone who prayed that prayer. And for those who are saved today. Oh, Lord, don't let a one hear. We believe all things. We hope all things. Love does. Don't let a one hear that's in this house be lost. We thank you that you're finding. Let them find you, oh, Lord. You're reaching out. Thank you for what you've done in my heart today, Lord. Thank you for your cleansing. Those people that we're praying for, we pray that they would come to knowledge of salvation, of life in Jesus Christ. Now we give you praise. We give you honor. I bless every person, man, woman, boy, and girl in this place in the name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap? He's so good. Merry Christmas.